In October 1917, he had a situation where the kind of people that really were the objects of history all of a sudden took to the streets of Petrograd and other places and took matters into their own hands. You know, in Tsar Nicholas's court, there's this crazy Rasputin guy, there's all this kind of weirdness, people making shed loads of money from the war, you know, and they're living the high life while everybody else outside is miserable and starving and hungry. But the most striking thing is how very quickly the movement transformed itself from a trade union or economic discussion into a, a discussion about politics. The relationship between militarism, patriotism, nationalism, and plunder and war and imperialist oppression all suddenly came together in a way that people have been denying. Alfred Comrie, my grandfather, fought in the First World War. When Alfred Comrie left the war, he didn't leave as a patriotic socialist, he left as an unpatriotic communist. The February 1917 revolution, which led to the fall of the Tsar, was welcomed by many people in the West. Who in their right mind today would defend the Tsar? I mean, the biggest myth is the idea that it wasn't a working class revolution. And in fact, if it hadn't have happened, Russia would have developed a wonderful liberal democracy, which would not have been the case. Every single member of the Duma and the provisional government were constantly pushing back the working class, culminating in almost a total counter-revolution in August, which was stopped not by the conspirators in their room, but by the mass activity of the working class, tearing up railway lines as counter-revolutionary forces tried to move in on Petrograd. It was a mass movement of ordinary people to transform their lives. If Lenin hadn't turned up at the Finland station in 1917, there would have been no Bolshevik revolution. The Soviets were workers and soldiers' councils, and they were a kind of direct democracy. You know, a bit like CLR James would have said, you know, every cook can govern, and suddenly they were. And yet a, an, an incredible uh, renaissance in filmmaking, in the arts, which tried to, in a sense, take a leap forward. At the time of the Russian Revolution, Western political elites were terrified. It's shaped the whole history of the 20th century. Oh, oh, oh.